Praise the Lord and welcome to Father's Care Church Online. We are so blessed and privileged to have you join us here this morning. And I know that we have an awesome service in store for you. So just before we get into it, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever. Amen. 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 I know that we have an awesome service for you now. So let's just get ready to clap our hands and lift up a joyful noise unto our maker as we get into worship with the Father's Care worship team. Good morning, church. How are we today? God is good. God is good. All the time, God is good. Everyone's all dressed up. It's almost as if it's someone's birthday today. Let us not forget the reason why we're here, church. And let us sing and praise the Lord. Amen. Save by grace. Yes, Lord. We are saved by your grace. Yes, Lord.
are saved by the work that you have done in Calvary. Amen? Let's sing, the battle belongs to you, Lord. The battle belongs. Your soul. When all I see is the mountains When all I see is the mountain You see a mountain move And as I walk through the shadow And as I walk through the shadow Your love surrounds me Yes, it does, Lord There's nothing to fear
Let's close our eyes, church, as we enter into his presence. I call upon your Holy Spirit, Father God. I call upon your Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fall in this place. And I need. Darkness seems to hide his face. 
presence, Father. Hey church, we hope you are staying safe and staying connected with one another. Even though we are not able to gather together in person right now, we want to encourage you to connect with us through our different avenues. If you have any prayer requests or in need of a person to talk to, simply contact us using the details on the screen to get in touch. We encourage you to continue your generosity and giving what belongs to the Lord. On the screen are our online account details which you can use to tithe. Now, let's prepare our hearts for the Word and what the Lord has in store for us today. What a way to begin with the Word. Only Jesus. Once again, a very warm welcome to you, church, and to those who have joined us online. We welcome you this morning. We're going to get right into the Word, and with one voice, one heart, we're going to read the Word of God together as we honour the reading by standing. And those of you who are watching us online, you can do the same. You can read loud and clear, stand up wherever you are as we honour the Word of God. So shall we begin? My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my saints. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. Let's pray. Father, we love you, we honour you. Lord, as your word is coming before your precious people, let it indeed be my mouth, but your words. Let your anointing flow in this place, uncompromised, unhindered. Let minds be renewed, lives be transformed, the body of Christ edified, and the name of Jesus glorified. I also pray this morning, Lord, especially, Lord, for a miraculous intervention in your people's life. As the word comes, I pray for divine intervention. We give you praises, honour and glory, Lord. Have your way in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. So we have been looking into the series called Guard Your Heart. And today we are on the second last part, part four, and next week we will be concluding this series. And so just for the benefit of those who have missed I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes to recap. The last that we saw was how to, re, how to guard your heart. You know, heart is the most innermost part of our being. That's the center of our being. And the Bible says that guard your heart, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. That means everything begins in the heart. It's a source, it's a place where things flow out of that will determine the direction of your life. Amen. And so one of the things I shared with you was how to guard your heart was to begin by guarding your mind. And we looked into Romans 12 too, where Paul said, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? So that you may prove what is that? Good 
perfect and acceptable will of God. Amen? Because that's, that's His will. And His will for you is good, it's acceptable and it's perfect. And so I know all of us, I'd like to meet you if you say no to this, all of us want some sort of transformation in our life. Right? If somebody doesn't want to change in any area, man, I'd love to meet you after this service. We all are praying for some kind of changes. We all desire some kind of changes. And here, Paul is telling us that nothing will change until and unless our thinking changes. So the area that you want to bring changes in, we better start renewing our mind to the Word of God about that particular area. Come on, amen? That's what Paul is saying. Because when you align your mind to the Word of God, to the thoughts of God about that particular situation or area, then you will begin to experience what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. His Word in your life. And so everything begins with our thinking. So if you want to guard your heart, you've got to guard your mind. Amen? And because we've got to be vigilant, because it is an ear of, of being prayerful, being watchful, and being thankful. One more time, it's an ear of being thankful. We're hitting the half year mark, church. <laughs> right? We better get this in our spirit that it is the ear of being prayerful, watchful, and thankful. And we've got to be vigilant that we are not giving our mind, Bible says to Colossians 2 and verse 8, beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of man, according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. Tradition and legalism and philosophy and empty talk can deviate us from the Word of God. Amen. So we've got to have our mindset that is aligned with the Word of God. And we studied that how the mind is the battlefield, where we've got to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And as you do, remember you are protecting your heart because that thought will sooner or later drop down in your heart as a belief. That's where it starts. That's where it starts. So you've got to protect your mind to protect your heart. Amen? So if it doesn't match, the thought that comes, if it doesn't match, we've got to reject it. Amen? And so we studied also how to renew our mind. You know, in the process of renewal of our mind, repentance takes place. Okay? Repentance means change your thinking. Change your mind. Amen. And I prayed this morning as I was worshipping that, Lord, you know, if people were going in this left, let your word today bring them to the right. You know, let repentance take place as the word is coming. Maybe you were dealing it in a particular way, but may this word set you in a divine direction. Amen. That repentance, a change of mind, change of thinking that will cause you to be on the divine direction that God wants you to be in. Amen. And Jesus came preaching this word, repent. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is here. Why? Because there was now a new way of doing life. He came to show us that life. Amen. And so we studied then how to renew your mind a good place to start, who can remember? Read the Word. <laughs> Read the Word, people. Amen. Remember Proverbs 4, 20 to 27? I said, everything from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, it is impacted by the Word of God. The eyes, the ears, the mind, the heart, ultimately the feet represents the steps, the action, the direction you're going to take. And it begins with our mind. But our mind is impacted, the thoughts are impacted, but what are we putting in front of our eyes? Amen? So the good place, he says, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. So pay attention, focus on my word. 
Amen. Do not let them depart from your eyes. That's why we are so particular in our church that everything is projected, that your eyes are projected on the Word. It's powerful because we can come here and say the Bible says, how do you know? It's in the Word. You are putting your eyes on the Word. That's why when somebody quotes a scripture, somebody is saying a scripture, oh, turn to that scripture. It's amazing when you put your own eyes to that scripture because the book is living. It will begin to interact with you. It will begin to talk to you. It will begin to convict you. It will begin to do some things in your life that no other book can. Amen. Amen. You know, people have met me and they said, oh, there's such a huge transformation in you. Only secret while I'm telling you, renewing of my mind. No other secret. Nothing, nothing happened. And nothing happened. That's not, that's a mystery. The only difference was I began to renew my mind to the word. And it has to, word has to bring changes. Amen. It's invertible. It's life. Amen. So the eyes, the ears we talked about, there's a good place to start is by reading the word. Jesus said in Luke eleven thirty four, 34, the eye is the lamp of the body. When your eye is clear, that means spiritually perceptive, focused on God, your whole body also is full of life and light, sorry, benefiting from God's precepts. And when it is bad, spiritually blind, your body also is full of darkness. That means we do not know God's will for us. Amen. So eyes and ears and the entrance of God's word gives light. Eyes, you empower what you behold. Amen. Second part was to memorize the word. Read the word, memorize the word. Remember I shared with you many years ago, I asked God, I wanted to know the word meditate. What does it mean to meditate on the Word? Because I had no idea how to meditate. And he took me to the picture of a cow when the cow grazes the grass. It's not really eating, it's just grazing, grazing. And then goes and sits under a tree and then regurgitates that grass and chews and chews and chews. So that grazing is like memorizing the Word. And often, most of us, we have stopped there. We have been good in memorizing the word. But I tell you what, the second part of this is meditating on the word, okay? So read the word, memorize the word, meditate the word. So reading, memorization, meditation. What is meditating on the word? Which I believe is a missing link in most of our life to see the transformation. It comes from a Hebrew word, Hagar, which means to reflect, to ponder, to mutter. It means to meditate, to contemplate as one repeats the words. Ponder by talking to oneself. It's an active recitation of the word of God. And can I tell you the good news? We all have the power, the potential to do it because we are all pondering and muttering to ourselves about something. Come on. When we say meditate on the word, we kind of all fluster about a bit of thing, we can't do it. But let me tell you, you are already meditating. You're already thinking about something deeply, pondering about it, talking about it, muttering about it, reciting about it, 101 times a day, even more times a day, from the dawn to dusk. You are meditating. It's just sadly, we are meditating mostly on the negative. What she said and what they said and what did they do and how hurt I am. We are muttering and muttering and muttering. No wonder we feel depressed by the end of the day. <laughs> Amen. Are we getting this? So understand to guard your heart, you've got to mind your mind. And so reading the word... I'm telling you the process of renewing your mind. So you're reading the word and then memorization and then meditation because meditation will lead you to revelation and that revelation will cause transformation. 
Without the revelation of the word, there's no transformation. It will just be words and knowledge to you. Just be words and knowledge to you. Because it's in the Bible, we just read it, we go about it, because we have not spent time in meditating on the Word of God. And meditation doesn't mean that you have to sit cross-legged in one place and you can't move. That's why I asked the Lord, because I had no concept of biblical meditation. Meditation can be done 24-7, anywhere, anytime. Amen. You're washing the dishes. You've got the word. You write it down. Just take one. And I hope you've all took that assignment that I gave you almost two weeks ago. Just take one verse and meditate on it. This is the secret. If you want to see changes, I'm giving you the secret, which is not really a secret anymore. One verse. And even if you have to sit on it for a whole month, do it. It will change your life. And so if you're washing the dishes, say, God so loved the world. Hmm. You've got into your car, God so loved the world. You're walking to the mall, God so loved the world. You're just repeatedly. See, it's so simple and practical. Our God is practical. He, doesn't, he didn't tell you that you have to sit in one way and rise up one way and walk one way and then you can meditate. He didn't say that. That's the beauty about having a relationship and not religion. Amen. Religion is sit this way, do this way, can't go here, got to have a shower and you can't do this at this certain time of the year. By the end of the day, you're like, might as well not do it. <laughs> because I don't even feel worthy to come in the presence of Lord. Let all the holy people go instead. I'll just be in the outer circle. (laughs) But thank God for what Jesus did. Thank God for His grace. Thank God for His love. Amen. So to guard your heart, you must guard your mind. Amen. When your heart is protected, your assignment is also protected. And today, We are going to look at this. When your heart is protected, your assignment is protected. God's plan, purpose, and destiny for you can be fulfilled. How? So today we are going to see that part in guarding your heart. So meditation leads to revelation that will change your life. Because all of a sudden that meditating the Word will bring the inner insights that you never knew. You will find that this book is actually talking to you, interacting to you. Because when you ask a question, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit is communing with you. But it comes as a result of renewing your mind and meditating on the Word of God. Not meditating on what the media has said or what your people have said or the experts have said. Not meditating and muttering and pondering and reciting that. It will not bring changes. It will only bring pressure, 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 stress, 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 anxiety, fear, worry. Anybody been there? I have. And it's not a fun place to be. It's not a fun place to be. Amen. So everything written in the Bible is for our benefit. And today I want to show you that guarding your heart is to guard, I mean, to guard your mind, you're guarding your heart. And to do that, you've got to renew your mind. And renewing your mind means you've got to meditate on the Word that will bring revelation and transformation. But this morning, I want you to have a realization that when your heart is protected, your assignment is also protected. Let that sink in. We all are here on an assignment. That means we are God designed and God purposed. Colossians 1.16 is very, very clear. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through Him and for Him. 
Say loud and clear. Say, I was created through him and for him. One more time, and even those who have joined us online, I was created through him and for him. One more time, I was created through him and for him. You are not a mistake or an accident. You are God designed, God purposed. I don't care what, a, what season of life you are in today. It still does not change the truth of the word that you are here on an assignment. You're here on an assignment. God destined you, God purposed you, and you need to know that you are here on God's assignment. And you were born exactly the year, the day. God knew exactly the generation that you were supposed to impact. God knows exactly the time and the seasons that you were supposed to be on planet Earth. So we are not here to just float around and build our own things. There is a God purpose upon all our lives. And here I am this morning trying to tell you that how important even more now is to protect our heart. Because when your heart's protected, your assignment will be protected. Let me tell you, many times over this decade, I felt like giving up. Oh, just because we come up here and preach and do things, you know, it doesn't mean that we are uh, bulletproof. In case you didn't know, that you probably think we have a perfect life when we come up here. Walls of the wicked one keeps firing. The fiery darts keep coming. Why are you doing this church work and preaching and teaching? What for? You can do better things. You can make more money. It will come. It will come. I don't know if people are really getting the message, is it really worth doing it? I'm talking about reality. That's a reality. We all go through it. And to the, to the point, sometimes we're just on the verge of throwing in the towel. But thank God for His grace. Thank God for the Word. Thank God for the Holy Spirit who will pick you remind you because of the word that you've been meditating on. That all things were created for him and through him, Rekha, you were not your own. Oh, okay, I get it. Okay, 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 let me get out of me. Me, myself and I, my flesh, shut up. You're not your own, you're God's. Okay, calm down. Let the me decrease and him increase. Come back to the Word. It's a real battle, people. It's a real battle. Come on. We all go through it. But I'm telling you here again and again, only one thing will protect us, that is the Word of God. Without that inner flesh, I can get up and go and do whatever I want to do. My flesh wants to do. That's why John the Baptist prayed, let me decrease and you increase God. I always pray, let, Lord, help me to get out of the way. Lord, today, as I'm preaching, help me that me doesn't get in the way to what you want to say to your people. Because me wants to give my opinion. Right? But I'm not here on a me assignment. I'm here on a God assignment. And so I've got to see you through His lenses, not mine. Come on. Amen. If you get this, you will protect your heart and mind. Your assignment will be protected. 
It's so important, so important because you all have a destiny. You all have a purpose. Time and time again, you will hear from our senior pastor, Pastor George, myself, the leaders, encouraging each one of you that now you can do this. You've got this in you. You've got this talent in you because it's the truth. We were not here just to attend church every Sunday and just res- and then go back the same way. There's a village waiting for you. There's a community waiting for you. There's a city waiting for you. There are nations waiting for you. You believe that? You believe that? Say amen. There are nations waiting for you. Hallelujah. We are here to fulfill the greatest, the great commission, the great commission that Jesus gave. And he gave to his church, he gave to his children, he gave to his disciples, not to the pastors and the leaders. It may look different to how you've been uh, anointed in your task, but you've all been assigned to this great commission. But our giftings may differ, the Bible says. Where Sister Kim can go, I can't go. And I'm cool with that because God has given her a grace and influence amongst people that I may never have influence and access. You understand? You've got to recognize that. You've got to recognize your strength. You've got to recognize your weakness and be cool and secured in it. And strive to be the best in your strength and in your weaknesses, in the areas you're not too good. Ask for help with your brothers and sisters. I'm not too good in this. I believe you are. You can do this better than me. Amen. Are we good so far? Hallelujah. So it's very important that you know. See, I want to talk to you about Joshua and a bit about David this morning. They were real people, real assignments were given. God said to Joshua 5 to 8, no man shall be able to stand before you, Joshua, all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. So God is encouraging Joshua, assuring Joshua that after Moses, I have not left you, I will continue to be with you. And here's your assignment, Joshua. Verse 6. This was Joshua's assignment. You're going to lead the people into the promised land and you're going to divide the land as an inheritance to the people. This is your assignment, very clear. Only, Joshua, be strong and very courageous. Okay? That you may observe to do according to all in that time, all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn to the, from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. But in your assignment, Joshua, be careful. Don't turn left or right. Only focus on me, my word. Okay. This book of the law, Joshua 1.8, has changed my life. I've learned so much from this scripture. It says book of the law, but for us New Testament believers, it is the word of God. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. There's a difference between having success and good success. Sometimes people are successful at the expense of their relationships, at the expense of their health. But when God's success is, it's a good success where you have everything. That's called true prosperity, a wholesome prosperity. Mind, will, notion, everything in, your, in every area of your life when it's God's way. And it does not come at the expense of compromising the Word of God, compromising your integrity, compromising godly values. Amen? This book of the law, 
This is the key. So when Joshua is commissioned by God to lead the people of Israel to the promised land after the death of Moses, this is the strategy and instruction given by God. The strategy was not some war tactics or weapons, but only to be focused on God's Word. I ask you, can you imagine yourself in Joshua's place? And God is whispering to you, calling you into an assignment, and you've been given a huge responsibility, but to fulfill this God-given assignment in your life, He's saying to you, only be focused on the Word of God. But just spend a few seconds, even those who would join online, think about it. God is giving you an assignment. He's saying, don't focus on anything else, what money you have, what resources you have, what connections you have, what education you have, what I don't have this, I don't have that. I know because when God called me, I was trying to nullify the calling. I haven't done a degree, I haven't done this, I haven't done that, who will listen to me? We try and disqualify ourselves. I'm sure Joshua would have felt so overwhelmed that my God, Moses is not here and who's gonna listen to me? How am I supposed to lead these people? But here is God's word, not only to Joshua, but to all of us. God given assignment, you only need God's word. And that word will bring the resources that is connected to your assignment. It's up to you. Because that's the strategy Joshua was given. That word will quicken, that word will bring those divine people, resources, connections, influence, whatever is needed to fulfill your assignment. Amen? So God's encouragement and hint to Joshua, because I believe with all my heart that God is bringing the next dimension, elevation, calling, and dispensing some assignment in all of our lives. I, I believe that with all my heart. And so this, if you sense that, this message is for you that how are you going to accomplish your assignment, which is you guard your heart because it will guard your assignment. If you, very, very important. Guard your heart because enemy doesn't like us being called to God's field. He will bring so many distractions that will pollute and corrupt our heart and try to move us away from our assignment, God-given assignment. So Joshua 1.9, God said, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid and nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know why? In a way, if you read in between the lines, see this is what happens when you meditate on the word. In between the lines, God was actually hinting to Joshua, the four hints he was given, that Joshua, as soon as I put you on this assignment, let me tell you, my son, these four things will attack the assignment. He said, be strong. That means you will feel weak at times. He said, be of good courage. That means Joshua, there'll be times that you will feel very discouraged. Instead of having courage, you'll be discouraged. If people are on an assignment in here and if you felt that, say amen. Amen. Hey, Joshua, do not be afraid. Why? Because there'll be times fear will attack your heart and mind. And Joshua, do not be dismayed. You know why? Because God knew that there'll be times uh, that you'll have anxiety and distress and concern. You'll be upset. No wonder God repeats this. I mean, if God keeps saying be strong and not courage four times, I'll, that itself will make me to think about why God keeps saying that. 
Four times in the scriptures, God is telling Joshua, be strong and of good courage. It will take strength and courage to fulfill God's assignment or purpose in our life. Strong, it comes from a Hebrew word, chazat, means be strong, courageous, valiant, manly, strengthened, established, firm, fortified, mighty. Generally strong or strengthened re- defines chazak, but there is a wide range of meaning for this word. For example, in 1 Samuel 30 verse 6, you know, when David loses everything, and the Bible says that when David encouraged himself in the Lord, what it actually literally means is that he strengthened himself in the Lord, in his word. He made himself strong again, courageous again, valiant again, mighty again, because he found himself to be in that place of distress, in that place of discouragement, in that place of weakness, because everybody, enemies had come, taken everything away from him and his own people turned against him. But he was on an assignment. He was on an assignment. And the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. Many a times in this journey of doing your assignment on purpose, there'll be people who you relied on will leave you. Enemy will attack your possessions, your family, your stuff. But like David, we've got to once again turn back to the Lord, turn back into the Word and gain our strength in the Word. Not running here and there and telling everybody what has happened. David was only, he was by himself. The Bible literally says, everybody forsook him. Everybody forsook him. How do you think David fulfilled his assignment? He said he strengthened himself in the Lord. We are on an assignment. Some of you are being assigned to new things in your life. So it's all happy, chappy, yeah, very good. But the devil ain't going to roll a red carpet for you. This is a very prophetic message. Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. So Joshua, coming back to Joshua, this is the instruction given by God. Joshua, if you want to be prosperous and have good success in your assignment, this is what you're going to do. And if you read the book of Joshua, every instruction, no matter how silly, how foolish it sounded, Joshua did it. And that's why Joshua 21 verses 43 to 45 says, So the Lord gave to Israel all the land of which he had sworn to give to their fathers, and they took possession of it and dwelt in it. They took possession of the land that was theirs. The Lord gave them rest all around according to all that he had sworn to their fathers and not a man of of all their enemies stood against them and the Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. All the Amorites, the Jebusites, the Canaanites and all the ites that were there (laughs) couldn't steal the inheritance that was rightfully uh, God's, belonged to God's children. Amen. Your rightful inheritance should come to you. And the key is meditating on the word of God. Not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass, Joshua said. Joshua said, behold this day, I am going the way of all the earth. This is his final farewell speech to his people. He says, I'm about to go to be with God. And you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing has failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spoke concerning you. All have come to pass for you, not one word of them has failed. That means Joshua was prosperous and Joshua had good success. No, don't come now. It's too soon. We've only got started. <laughs> they always come very, very quick. Artie, go back to their seats. Amen. 
I was only getting started. Are you getting this, church? Are you getting a revelation, a realization that you are here on an assignment? Do you know that to guard that assignment, you've got to guard your heart? To guard your heart, you've got to be in the Word. And honestly, I've only just begun. It's a very important message that we will continue next week. But let me just leave you with this word. Psalmist says in one, one to three, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. The word that was given to Joshua, the word that is coming in our play, in, in our midst. That in your assignment, in my assignment, we cannot afford not to be in the word of God. And when we are, we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. We will bring forth in our, and it's, we will bring forth fruit in our season. Our leaves shall not wither. And whatever we do, we will prosper. Whatever we do, we will prosper. You know why? Because our mind and our heart is guarded by the Word of God. And as long as you are saturated with the Word of God, you will only produce the fruit of the Word. Not your flesh, not the world. Hallelujah. Church, as we rise to our feet, I want to pray for you. This morning I have a, a, a desire, a strong desire to just pray for you that God would really intervene in a divine way in our lives. That perhaps you've been doing life in one way and just not being oblivious and ignorant to the fact that you belong to God and there's an assignment, there's a calling on your life. And you've been making your own plans but I pray that God is going to interject your plans and that He's going to get you on the divine plan. Because when we are in the divine plan, there's protection for us. You'll be saved from many heartaches and losses in your life. So as we close our eyes, as we look onto God, I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, and through your precious blood. We thank you for the word that has come before your precious people. Indeed, Lord, without your word, we are lost. Without your word, we are nothing. So I now pray for the precious people of God, from the youngest to the oldest in this auditorium and to those who are hearing this online, whenever they will watch this, I pray for the same anointing, same presence to touch them that in that place, in that season of their lives, that a, a remarkable shift is going to come. A remarkable paradigm shift is going to come where you're not going to just live for yourself. You're going to have such a revelation that you are God designed and God purposed. And you are going to turn to the Word of God and you will begin to renew your mind. You will begin to meditate on the Word. And that will bring revelation and transformation in your life. And not just that, I prophesy over you that you are going to touch lives, sir, in the city, in the country, in the highway, in the byway, in the marketplace, sir, in the church, outside the church. Sir. For the cities, the people, the nations sir, are waiting for you. Child of God, rise up. Rise up. Rise up in this anointing. Rise up in this calling. For no matter what, God destined you. God is calling you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. To God be the glory. Stay blessed. You may be seated as we continue in the service. Thank you, Pastor, for that awesome word. I do hope that the word has touched and transformed your life. Now, before we let you go, let us say the declaration together as a family. 
2022 is my year of devoting myself to prayer and being watchful and thankful. The grace of endurance and persistence in prayer and praying in the Spirit is increasing in my life and my spirit is overpowering my flesh. I am vigilant and watchful as a lion ready to roar with authority and power. The spirit of grace and supplication is empowering me to surrender to the perfect will of God, propelling me to my destiny. This year I am anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, my requests are being made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding is guarding my heart and mind through Christ Jesus. I declare I will see the effective, fervent prayers of the righteous, releasing heaven on earth, manifesting God's supernatural power and glory with signs, wonders and miracles in and through my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you once again for joining us here this morning. Now, if this word has touched and impacted your life, don't be afraid to share it to someone in need who needs Jesus at this time. Now, we're so grateful that you can join us and we can't wait to see you again next week. Please be sure to like, share and subscribe on all of our social media. Stay blessed.